Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. So today uh, we are going to have uh, our lecture. So uh, today on this particular special occasion, so we have uh, Professor Dr. Manu Bhara. So Manu Bhara ji is the chairman and president of Business Excellence Inc. of Global Quality Management Consulting Firm. He has over 44 years of leadership experience and has guided Fortune 500 companies with well-grade performance excellence assessment. For over 26 years, as an adjunct professor, he teaches operation management courses at business schools globally. He is connected with over 800 uh, educational institutes worldwide. He is a sought-after speaker on business excellence and quality management topics with over 920 presentations globally in 17 countries across five continents and published over 70 scholarly articles. He has published 500 blog posts on quality management. In 2013, he gave two TEDx talk, TEDx at IIT Beach, Varanasi and TEDx IIT Chicago. Since 2013, he has delivered soft skills and quality management topics using technology to over 50 colleges, universities in 14 states of India, benefiting over 7,75,000 students, faculty, professionals. In 2016, he delivered a project, Management for Organizational Excellence, a GYAN course approved by MHRD, Government of India, at his alma mater, IIT BHU. In 2016, he has appointed a Fulbright Specialist by US Department of State and completed his first Fulbright project at IIT BHU in March 2018. He has BTEC honors, IIT BHU Chemical 1968, MS 1970, and PhD 1975 in chemical engineering from Illinois Institute of Technology, Chicago, and an MBA 1985 with marketing management from Keller Graduate Schools of Management, Chicago. As the founder, director, and president of Blind Foundations for India, BFI, he and his team has raised over 4 million US dollars to help over 1 million visually impaired people in India. He received NRI of the Year Award in 2018. In philanthropy category from Times Now and ICIC Bank in Mumbai, India, Dr. Bhora has received 52 awards honors for its outstanding performance services and received 35 awards honors for its lifelong community service, including US President's Volunteer Service Award there. So without any further delay, so today uh, his topic will be on innovation, uh, education, innovation, entrepreneurships, and service for nation building there. So the guest of honor address will focus on education, innovation, entrepreneurship and service for nation building. Dr. Bhora will examine the above four facets of respect to gradual reality and desired state in India. The current higher education systems in India needs to address key gaps in learning methods, academic curricula, quality of education, faculty knowledge, industry participation and alumni engagement to foster innovation and encouragement entrepreneurship. A special emphasis on integrating seven key skills areas in the existing curricula to address the issue of unemployment, underemployment will be addressed. A successful case study of delivering soft skills and quality management knowledge using technology to over 50 institutions in India with an outreach over 6,75,000 people will be highlighted. A case study of healthcare projects will be shared helping over 1 million blind people in India. So without any further delay, sir. Okay, thank you very much. And may I request you to go on a mute from your side. Uh, so good morning to all of you. Uh, it is uh, my delight to be with you joining my video from Chicago. And uh, at the outset, I want to thank uh, Professor Sinaji, the director, uh, for his very kind invitation, Dr. Vishwaski for a very kind introduction and Ankit Ji for all the technical support. So let me share my presentation at this point. So the roadmap uh, for today's presentation in the morning is I'll focus on four aspects. First is the education and within education we will look at the role of education and quality followed by higher education challenges in India and some possible solutions using World Bank recommendations as well as 
special module in which Barbridge Performance Excellence Framework for Education. Then we'll segue into innovation through technology. Then uh, we'll look at the entrepreneurship challenges in India in the current scenario. And then the last segment will focus on doing social service, giving back to the society through two personal projects in the education domain and in the healthcare domain. So let's begin with the education and its importance of it. So the quality of education has a direct impact on preparing students ready for employment as well as starting their own entrepreneurial companies uh, in any domains. And uh, focus should be on celebrating the excellence and success in the classroom as opposed to mere attempts. Now, uh, let me tell you, in the 20th century, the, to be successful, one needs to be proficient in reading, writing, and arithmetic. In the 21st century, this is given. We must have those three. But we need to acquire three new skills. And those skills are teamwork, problem solving, and project management. Unless we master these three skills, the teamwork, problem solving, and project management, we will not be competitive in the global marketplace. Now, uh, let me share with you some new statistics about higher education challenges in India. So according to MHRD, there are well over 6,000 engineering and technological institutions taking 2.9 million students every year as an intake. 1.5 million engineers released into the job market every year. A survey was done with about 10% sampled by aspiring minds. And what they found among engineering students who were surveyed barely 7% were suitable for core engineering jobs. That's a huge challenge. So what's happening is students are graduating and collecting their degree, but they do not have the right skill set. And without the right skills, they are unable to hold the job. And that increases the unemployment rank. Today I was just reading the Times of India summary 8.5% unemployment rate in India. That is very high. Now, uh, if we go further down, what are some of the root causes of uh, education challenges in India? On the left side, I am uh, showing the current state, and let me focus on the right side, the desired state we get to, and we need to go to. So, in terms of the learning methods, instead of not learning, we need to start with the inquiry based learning. Instead of just try theories, we need to understand best in class practices. On the academic curriculum side, instead of irrelevant curriculum, we need to align the curriculum to industry needs and very important to integrate soft skills in the curriculum. And I'll expand on that topic a little later in the presentation. We need to instill quality at the system level as well as in the curriculum in all subjects that should be focused on quality. Very important for the faculty to have some industry experience, either they have worked in the industry or they do some consulting with the industry project. They must renew and upgrade their knowledge on a continuous basis. We need to have industry participation by inviting key people from the industry on the advisory board. And uh, we need to respect and engage our alumni to strengthen the bond between the alumni and the institution. So looking at this scenario, we have a long way to go in India. And uh, we need to have a concerted effort to reach to the desired state. Now, uh, let's look at some of the possible solutions offered first by the World Bank on education. So, according to World Bank, education is fundamental to the development of any country and is strongly linked to the economic growth. And therefore, 
helping countries to reform their education systems and teaching aids to promote learning for all is the central thrust of the World Bank's education strategy. So the key word is learning for all. And uh, a systems approach needs to be deployed which focuses both on education outcomes and how all the inputs contribute the best outcomes. So we need to look at education as a system. Now uh, here is another good possible solution from the US policy framework for performance excellence in education. So historically, going back to 1987 by the Act of U.S. Congress, the Public Performance Excellence Pro Program was established. In the early years, it was manufacturing, service, and small business. In 2001, the education category was included in the program. And since 2001, there are 13 public winners in education as a role model. Uh, there are seven K to 12 schools, one grade, seven to 12 schools, one community college, one four-year college, one undergraduate business school, and one career training center, as well as one entire university. So the Valrith criteria focuses on systems approach, including seven categories which start with the leadership and ends with the results and I'll share the model in the next slide. And the request is to start looking at the public in education framework in the India scene by doing the assessment, which is a self-assessment, identify the areas of strength and identify also the gaps, in other words, the opportunity for improvement. And we can leverage the learning from the US education system and see what we can borrow and implant within the Indian education system so that we can make a tremendous improvement system-wide. Rather than piecemeal work, we need to look at the entire system. So here is the model for the Balrish framework. As I mentioned, leadership is the category one, more like an engine, and then strategic planning, Customer focus, measurement analysis and knowledge management, workforce focus, operations focus, all leading to the results for the organization. Category 1 through 6 are the process based. Category 7 is the results due to the process. So you cannot have random results for a given year, more like a flu. You need to have a systematic processes in place which will allow you to get good results year over year, sustain them and continue to grow the organization. Now, uh, out, out of education, we are moving on to the second aspect, that's innovation through the technology. And I'm showing you two sides of the picture, the old versus the new. Some of you may remember the rotary phone for communication. Now we have moved on to the iPhone, which is almost a computer in the palm of your hand. The second set is to move the maze, used to have host carriages. Now we use World Wide Web to communicate. Third, to for local transport, we used to have full of cars. Now we use automobiles. And for intercontinental travel, People used to go on a ship. Now you can go in a less amount of time using the airplanes. So all of these things is changing so rapidly because the consumer demands and consumer preferences are going up. The technology is evolving and there is a tremendous progress and a lot of innovation is happening in all different fields. So it, let's talk about some of the great innovators. In the top row, we start with Thomas Alva Edison, the person who invented the light bulb. What he says is, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. In other words, persistent space. If you receive any roadblock or a 
any uh, failure, do not end. Keep working on it till you find the right solution. Albert Einstein, as we know, he found that <coughs> gave us the theory of relativity. Alexander Graham Bell, the great innovator, he started and gave us the telephone. Uh, and I had a great pleasure to work at ADM Bell Labs for 17 and a half years. And of course, Steve Jobs, uh, who came up with the Macintosh, iPad, and iPhone. Now, on the India scene, we can see Sir C. V. Raman, who did the groundbreaking work in light scattering, and he was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1930. Chaklish Chandra Bose, pioneering discovery in plant physiology, and uh, he was having a multifaceted uh, discipline, physicist, biologist, botanist, and archaeologist, all in one, and he was knighted. Sir M. Vishweshwar Raya, a civil engineer who helped in flood protection system in Hyderabad and special containment in the dams in Pune, Kharakwasla Dam. He was given Bharat Ratna in 1995. And last, Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, who was excellent in space research. He founded the ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, first chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. So what can we learn from these great innovators? So they had an idea and they kept working on the new idea till they found the solution to benefit the society. So this is what all the young minds sitting there in the audience, we need to take on some of the challenges uh, in terms of finding the good innovative solutions to help the society. Now the third aspect, entrepreneurship. So let me share a quote from Professor Muhammad Yunus, uh, 2006 Nobel Peace Laureate. He was here in Chicago and uh, he was interviewed by the Chicago Public Media in 2015. He made a profound statement. He says the education system around the world is totally misaligned. It is creating more job seekers than job creators. And it's absolutely true. We need to have focus in our education system to create more entrepreneurs uh, rather than people who get the degree and keep begging for a job. Now, uh, here are some challenges in terms of entrepreneurship that the India scene. So basically, our culture is everyone is looking to have a cushy corporate job. There is not enough entrepreneurship and institutions. There is not enough experience and qualified faculty to teach entrepreneurship. There are not sufficient number of venture capitalists. There are not enough role model entrepreneurs. And we are not using the talent, potential talent in the rural areas and daily job environment. And of course, the state and central level policy and resources are not aligned to help in the entrepreneurship scene. And uh, here is a little bit more data. Uh, Startup India program was launched on January 16, 2016 in India. One year later, out of 10,000 crore, which was invested or accounted or announced for the program, only 5.6 crore. A small fraction of the 10,000 crore was used within a year. And that is not good. So the plans are there, but the execution is weak. Now, uh, challenge is how successful is Prime Minister Modi's Startup India program. So there was a survey done of 15,000 startups. Only 18% of respondents said they actually benefited from the startup India scheme. So there's something lacking. And uh, out of 15,472 recognized startups in India, only 103 startups have benefited from the funds of the funds in the last three years. 
until end of December 2018. And the fund allocation and distribution is coming down further. So the real question is, is the program effective? Is the program efficient? And what can be done to ensure that whatever plan and the programs are put together rightly so that the benefits more entrepreneurs create more jobs and uh, more businesses start. Now on the good side, there are some big resources for India seen in terms of entrepreneurship. So it's at IIM Ahmedabad, Indian School of Business, Hyderabad, IIM Calcutta, IIT Madras, Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India in Ahmedabad. There are two in Bangalore National Entrepreneurship Network, one one foundation and association of women entrepreneurs in Karnataka a week. We need to have more of these resources in each state and each of the educational institutes should have a great focus on entrepreneurship program to allow students to learn the fundamentals and enter the workforce with a sense of creating the own small businesses which can mushroom and become big, employing many, many more people within those enterprises. So, I want to shift our direction to the importance of soft skills. This is a future of jobs and schools from World Economic Forum. Let's focus on the left side. What are the top 10 skills needed to be successful in 2020? So the first one is complex problem solving, second critical thinking, third creativity, four people management, five coordination with others, six emotional intelligence, seven judgment and decision making, eight service orientation, nine negotiation, and the last one cognitive flexibility. Now, uh, if we ask if there is a faculty in the audience, how many of these topics are we covering in the curriculum? Mostly not any. So the challenge is to keep our curriculum up to date in alignment with the needs of the industry, the needs of all the domains, and prepare the students so when they graduate, they have the right skill set and then they are useful and uh, able to hold the job. This is a real challenge. Now, uh, as we know, Skilling India, uh, Modi Ji has a uh, big challenge uh, with about uh, 250 to 300 million people age group 24 to 38. They need to be trained. And how can we do this massive amount of training the technology such as what we are using today. Sitting here about 10,000 miles away from Kaiserati from your uh, campus in Chicago, they are using the technology in your world to transmit the information. Now I want to share with you a special effort done in a brand new university in Alexandria in Egypt as an international advisor I was asked to come up with a special curriculum for a university with the discipline in engineering, business, pharmacy, and medicine. The new university, they have their core curriculum, but in addition, we put together a seven critical items, leadership, communication, entrepreneurship, soft skills, research methods, quality methods, and community service. And created a path-taking portfolio approach by integrating these seven areas along with the core curriculum. So what students do for a four or five year program, they study the core subjects, plus they have to take these seven subjects, both they have to study the theory, as well as do the practical projects in teams. Each of these seven subjects get graded every year, and by the end of their program, 
they need to have 80%, complete 80% grade in order to be successful in passing the program. Now, what this does is it creates a portfolio of the special seven skills. So when a student after graduating goes for a placement, he or she can show this report card to the prospective employer. That means they have better skills and they are exposed to these areas and they will be more likely to be absorbed and they will do well in the workplace. So the bottom line is when you master your soft skills, you master your destiny. Now let's talk a little bit about communication. Let's focus on the second half of the slide here. It says no matter what job you have in life, your success will be determined 5% by your academic credentials, 15% by your professional experiences, and 80% by your communication skills. And what do we do? We run after 5% and 15% and neglect 80% which is the communication skills and uh, fill in the words other soft skills such as leadership, initiative, decision making, time management, meeting management, teamwork, etc. Unless we are proficient in those skills, we will not be useful in the workplace in the 21st century. And in communication, we need to focus on all three aspects, the verbal, the written, and the presentation part. And each of these areas has to be effective as well as requires lots of practice because without practice one cannot be effective in any of these areas of communication. Now let me share with you our free Yandani project which started at uh, IIT BHQ, my alma mater in Varanasi in uh, 2014. Between 2014 to 2016, we covered 12 topics of leadership excellence series using Google Hangout to reach out to students. And that was a free service. And then it allowed us to record the program on YouTube. And that was also made public. There were five topics, leadership, teamwork, time management, meeting management, and decision making. Those are the soft skills topics and seven topics on quality management, project management, risk management, talent management, points of customer management, operational excellence, supply chain management, and sustainable change management. Now, each of these topics were covered once a month uh, within the uh, two semester program. 45 to 50 minutes slides uh, presentation and then about 10 to 15 minutes Q&A uh, uh, via the chat box and all these topics are recorded and that link is shown with the American Society for Quality India Office Leadership Excellence Project. And I would request Dr. Vishwaski to share this presentation with everybody at Rajivan Institute of Petroleum Technology so that they can all benefit from this effort. Now, uh, this picture, the top right, you see Swami, Swami Krishna, and he was the uh, secretary uh, Maharaj at uh, Baroda Ramakrishna Mission. Uh, he took me to Bicep Studio in Gandhinagar, where Commissioner of Higher Education, Mr. Shah, the White Shirt, allowed me about 40 minutes time to talk from the Bicep Studio via satellite, connecting with 450 colleges, reaching out to 5 lakh students, 500,000 students, benefiting one of the very critical topics of effective time management. This entire topic has been professionally recorded and the new community is also provided. So this is how we can leverage the technology to reach out to the masses. And we have a big challenge how to educate our youth and impart them the right skills so that they are very productive and they are very effective in whatever they do in 
in their life. Uh, the gun students play uh, no regrets at the 11th National Quality Gun Play hosted by the Quality Council of India in New Delhi in 2016 and uh, elaborated upon this leadership excellence seeds project under the SQ India American Society for Quality India Office uh, collaboration. Uh, here are some of the inning sessions uh, that shows one in uh, Gujarat, SVBI in Gandhinagar, 2015 session, the one in Mumbai at uh, SIGS College in Cyan West. And our project was selected by the, the Council of India in 2016 as a ELSH Silver Quality Award for innovation in education, imparting soft skills training and quality management knowledge using technology to large number of people, 6 lakhs, 75,000 people, in 14 states of India, covering 50 different universities and colleges. So the last item I wanted to share with you in terms of these social service is in the healthcare. So 30 years ago, we started a blind foundation for India here in the USA. And uh, the impetus to start this project came when we had a visitor, Dr. Rajendra Vyas, who was the Honorary Secretary General of the National Association for the Blind. He himself was blind due to falling from a tree at the age of 11, he became blind. His father was uh, <coughs> well to do, and he allowed Dr. Rajendra by to become lawyer. He was practicing law even though he was blind. In 1952, he was one of the founders of the National Association for the Blind. He was awarded Padma Shri. He was visiting with us in 1988 and he told us that in India there are 15 million blind people and we were about 1 million Asian Indian ladies at that time, back in 1989, 88, 89, 90. So he said, do something for us. So we started the foundation, a simple mission to prevent and cure blindness and to provide education and rehabilitation to permanently blind people in India. And I wanted to share with you why this issue resonates with me. So when I was uh, 14 years old in high school, back in 1959, I was playing with the firecrackers. One of the firecrackers had not gone on. So I took the firecracker in my hand, not knowing the consequences. I put the puff of air, and lo and behold, that firecracker exploded on my face. So I had a third degree serious burn. My face was totally burned off. My eyes were shut. So I was literally a blind person at that point. Rushed to the hospital uh, for 24 hours. I could not see anything because there was a lot of residue inside the eyes. And during that time, I had to contemplate my future. I lost my parents by the age of six. No eyesight, no parents. My future was great. Fortunately, with the help of eye doctor, I got the residue out from my eyes and again the eyesight. And exactly 30 years later, from 1959 to 1989, we started the Blind Foundation for India. So, we see this is how the board works in a mysterious way. Planted a seed 30 years later, we became a foundation. And uh, we are very happy to share that we can do so much in from a distance. By doing a little bit of effort to help them look like a new people in India. Now let's quickly take a look at the standing statistics in terms of blindness. So in India there are 15 million blind people, accounting for one third of the blind population in the world. Every year 2.3 million people develop cataract into age related issues, and 2 million blind children, only 5% receive any education. And happy to share so far, we have raised $4 million uh, 
two lakhs free cataract operation, one million adults for the free eyesight checkups through the foundation and the partners throughout the year, and the 900,000 children have been examined for their eyesight, given glasses, vaccinated against measles, provided vitamin A, 10,000 free kids given to blind children for their education and 130 mobile ones donated to 19 states of India. I'm very happy to report that close to about 90 mobile ones went to various Ramakrishna missions throughout India, one of the cleanest and very honest charity operating without respect to religion, race, caste, creed, just serving humankind. And we have done 15 major projects with the Rotary Banking to the tune of $500,000. So the point is, it takes only $1 to prevent the blindness for children aged 4 to 6. If we give them 5 high doses of vitamin A orally in villages through social workers, that child will not go blind. He or she gets the education that during the lifetime the child can earn hundred thousand dollars. So one dollar investment in prevention can have a benefit of hundred thousand dollars. On the other side, when elderly people whose cataracts are not removed sitting in the villages, it takes only twenty dollars to remove a cataract in India. And here in the US we pay four thousand dollars for cataract removal. <coughs> And when the cataracts are removed, senior people, elderly people, become useful to themselves, to the family, and to the society. They are not burdened. Now, if uh, any one of you shop on the Amazon, you can indirectly help the foundation by going to smile.amazon.com and select Blind Foundation for India as a beneficiary for all the amount of purchases you make, 0.5% will come back to the AFI as a, your support to the foundation. Now, uh, in summary, for King Back Impact, a free Yangnan project 2013 to present last six years. Uh, with the effort using the technology, we have reached out to 6,75,000 people and 30 years of effort in free Jakshadan, number of adults and children outside checkups is 1.9 million. So the numbers are big and we need to do more in order to alleviate the suffering of people, blind people in India. Now uh, I want to spend a little bit of time on this slide, uh, focus more on the student, a little bit on educator and a little bit on entrepreneur side. Now, uh, on the student side, master your subjects, all of you, those who are in the attendance. Show respect to faculty. As we say, Guru Vinayana, we need to have full respect to the faculty because they are the ones who are giving you the knowledge. For better retention, pre read and post read chapters, excel both in technical and soft skills, be up to date, open to new options sample variety of subjects, be appreciative of the national and international issues, and be socially responsible. And I'm going to have some summary statement very soon. And if you are good at studies, mentor other students. It will be very rewarding. Now, those who are educators in the audience, they, as an educator myself, we need to renew our knowledge constantly because if we are not at the cutting edge, how can we give the best knowledge to the students? We need to engage students, and I have a very special case. The faculty can educate students by engaging, energizing, entertaining, and empowering them. They are the role model, uh, instill the cooperation and collaboration among student bodies, encourage creativity, curiosity and confidence among students by balancing theory and practice. And the biggest challenge and the job educators have to have is to encourage students to think. 
Don't just give them recipe, challenge them to think, and they will come up with the plausible answers to the challenges given to them. They should be approachable, and I put it this way, the role of the educator is to polish the rough diamond. The students, when they come in, they just remove the dust off the diamonds and make them shine by the time they are ready to graduate and make wonderful contributions in the world. And if you are an educator, uh, good at it, mentor others who are coming up in the hierarchy, and a uh, word of uh, advice for the entrepreneurs. Most of you should really think about starting your own company, have a dream, be a visionary, work with others, and really create some value-added idea to the customers and try to work with other entrepreneurs and help other entrepreneurs by mentoring them. So in summary, let us light the lamp of knowledge to eliminate darkness of ignorance. And I have a few quick comments and then we'll take a few questions. I would request all students in the audience to focus on four Ds. That is determination, dedication, discipline, and diligence. Combine that with the hard work and uh, you will be successful. Four things you must do while you are at the campus. Have a technical mastery of your subject. Secondly, form great network among your friends uh, across the uh, both chemical engineering and petroleum engineering with the faculty. Join your professional society student chapter at the campus and take one, one course which is near and dear to your heart in terms of community service, be in education, healthcare, agriculture, water issues, sanitation, etc. And uh, also I want to share that there are over 7 billion people in the world. There is not a single clever person who has figured out how to take either the knowledge of the wealth when the time comes to go and meet the Creator. So would it not be nice to give it away while we are still here and help others who could benefit begin to work on the critical issues as well as a number of faculties have started their own startups at different campuses. So there is a right environment, the incentives are there, they provide special facilities, uh, there are startup uh, programs and uh, there are entrepreneurship cells bringing up at various universities throughout the US. And similar approach is being taken at the IIT Madras, uh, IIT Bombay, etc. This needs to be expanded to all universities within India. Next question, please. What are the ways to generate funds in India? Uh, so let me clarify the question. Uh, funds to support the social work or uh, what is the question? Startup funds. Yeah. As see, the money uh, is not the everything. If you have a great idea and you are bringing a new innovative product onto the, into the market, then the people who have the money, the venture capitalists and other investors will come to you, provided you have done your homework. And they say, when you start your entrepreneurship, your startup, if you have too much money at the front end, you will not be as successful. So with the lean effort at the front end, if you could start your idea, have the core team, work on those issues, and come up with a plausible plan which can convince the investors and the venture capitalists to give you the funds you need, just the right amount of money to continue to develop your product and launch them and be successful. Uh, next question, and I think we are running uh, 
uh, on the time that you hear, so somebody else should be made call. I'm open here, it's about 12.30, past midnight, and I a little bit of nap before, so I'm fine. If there are further questions, I'll be happy to take one or two. If not, we can help them out. Okay, can you elaborate upon the importance of self motivation? Yeah, so I think uh, each one of us look back, each one of us has a motivation to succeed. We, everyone thinks they want to be successful, but not everybody is successful. Why? Because if you all make the plans, but if you don't execute the plan, if you are not passionate about it, you will not be successful. So the motivation is all there within us. We need to be working on our areas of interest, have the passion, and continue to work for the long-term success, long-term goal. There are several nice tech talks around me. Uh, so that says, if you have a passion, and if you continue to use your passion, to achieve the goals in the long term, you will be successful in life. Uh, one last question, if there is one. While we are waiting, I just wanted to share with you that uh, <clears throat> while I was in the undergraduate program at IIT, I took a petroleum engineering as my elective. I had a three months rotation training at the Gujarat refinery in Baroda, and uh, also we did ONGC oil field as a field trip, and both my masters and PhD thesis was involving uh, interfacial phenomena, use of uh, surfactants for tertiary oil recovery applications. So I'm quite uh, sort of connected with the petroleum engineering area. So one of the slides you show the importance of communication, showing 80% of success on communication. Uh, and that is to how to inculcate culture of a doer over a speaker. Yeah, so this is the story of uh, everywhere. Uh, and this goes back to the idea of action rather than keep talking about it. So let me share a very brief story so I can take 30 seconds. So about 35, 40 years ago, Prime Minister of India hired a British consultant to figure out what's the future of India. So that person took a little time, came back to the inner cabinet and he said, India has a very bright future, except there are two problems. One is there is a culture of corruption through and through, both at the uh, <coughs> ministry level as well as people who are working executing the actions. And second one, culture of inaction. In India, we have a tendency to keep talking, spend a lot of time in debate, and when time comes for action, people have left the field and they have started the next debate. So, lack of project management is hurting us. All of you should make a resolve to pick up project management, problem solving, and teamwork. You should be very, very proficient in those three skills. I was looking at your management development program where there is a project management program coming up. Uh, you should sign up for that, learn the fundamentals, and apply that while you are there at the university, and then benefit from it at your own place. With that, I think I'm running out of time from my side, so back to Professor Kishwas there. Sir, thank you, sir. First, uh, 
at this great night here, you are still with us uh, to educate us. There is a big and great thank you from our side there. In addition, sir, you have illuminated us about needing a system to create a culture to educate our body engineers about innovation, incubation, and starting up the new technology. Sir, we have highlighted the challenges in the process and the skills which are required to be modified to overcome them so that instead of becoming a job seeker there, we learn how the art of becoming a job giver there. You have also introduced that uh, you are thankful that you know that your great contributions to our, to our the BA fight for the blind people there. And you also the open offers and gains so that the big effort that you are taking to educate, uh, innovate and incubate in this entire uh, effort there can also be part of your uh, endeavor there. So saying it all there, a big thank from all of us there. Thank you, sir.